Philippians chapter 2 and verse 3, to amplify, it says, do nothing from factional motives. Through contentiousness, strife, selfishness. Selfishness is the opposite of kindness. Selfishness is mainly considering one's own interests. Your focus is all on you. Kindness is considering other people. So do nothing from factional or motives, uh, factional motives through contentiousness, strife, selfishness, or for unworthy ends, or prompted by conceit and empty arrogance. In the words, don't be proudful. Instead, in the true spirit of humility, lowliness of mind, let each regard the others as better than and superior to himself, yes. thinking more highly of one another than you do yourself. Now, the carnal mind doesn't think that way. The carnal mind is always looking out for himself, right. putting himself first. I'm going to look out for number one. That's the world's view. Again, these are God's thoughts. And he's saying, this is the way you're supposed to think. And if you think this way, you're going to act this way. Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. It's not what a man thinks he is, but what a man thinks on a consistent basis, mm -hmm. routinely, makes up his character. So you want to think along these lines. And if you don't think along these lines, you won't be able to act this out in your life. And I, I presented some questions, thoughts that people will have when you hear something like this. They will think, well, what's in it for me? Why should I go out of my way to help someone? What am I going to get out of giving of myself, of putting others before me? Why should I inconvenience myself for so-and-so, and I don't even like so-and-so? Matter of fact, so-and-so doesn't even like me. Why should I go out of my way by putting him or her first? And could or might consider them more superior than I am. Why should I do all of this? Well, this is the carnal mind. And this is, a lot of times, when you're dealing with the carnal mind, the carnal thoughts, they mainly are orchestrated by the devil. And if you allow the devil to orchestrate your, your thoughts, you're going to choose to go the way of the devil Yes. He said, I set before you life and death, blessings and curses. But he said, choose life. Life is the spirit. The scripture says that in Romans 8, uh, the carnal mind is death. But spiritually minded is life and peace. This is what we're looking for, life and peace. But a lot of times we venture over into the carnal mind, the carnal thinking, and trying to figure out why all of this chaos in my life. Where's all this pain and suffering come in my life? Well, you're choosing death by thinking carnally. In other words, you're not thinking like God and his word. So you have to make a decision. I'm going to have to die to these old carnal thoughts and, and embrace God's thoughts now. So that means that you're renewing your mind. You're changing the way you think. And if you change the way you think, you're going to change the way you act. Now, I was just thinking about you're dealing with cars. We know that if you're driving a car, you have to change your oil in, in your car periodically. If you don't, the oil will lose its viscosity. That's the strength of the oil to protect the in engine from friction, wear, and tear. So you have to do that periodically, or else the, you drive for a period of time, but that car is going to put you down. And it's going to end up costing you more money. You know, you're going to have to pay me now, or 
Pay me later. <laughs> you know? It's the same way with our minds. We have to renew our mind consistently. See, if, if you don't learn anything new today, tomorrow is going to be same as today. You need new information. You know, that God is all about increasing. Increasing in knowledge and understanding. That's God. He's always excelling. Always bigger and bigger. Matter of fact, even when God spoke the universe into existence, it's, it's still expanding because of that word. He spoke it and the word is still producing. The universe is expanding forever, increasing. So if you're not renewing your mind on a consistent basis, now you got friction. Now you got wear and tear. And it's coming from your thinking because it's not being renewed. Amen? It says, let each regard the others as better than and superior to himself, thinking more highly of one another than you do yourselves. Then it goes on to say, verse 4, let each of you esteem and look upon and be concerned, not merely for his own interests, but also each for the interests of others. It's not about me and my few. Yes, I'm going to take care of my few, but I, I'm, my thoughts also going toward other people. Remember I said that when you read the, the New Testament, it's all about serving others. Amen? That's it. Yeah. Amen? That's it. You know, Jesus said, I, I didn't come to be served. Come to serve. So without hands raised, how many of you want to be like Jesus? Oh, not today, Pastor Roy. Not today. Not today. No, when I get it, not today. You know, you know, when you got to serve somebody, when you got to help somebody you don't want to help, you say, well, I'm not going to be like Jesus today. I'll be like Jesus tomorrow. <laughs> But then it go, verse 5 goes on to say, let this same attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you, which was in your grandfather. Your auntie. <laughs> no, it says Jesus Christ. <laughs> Listen, if, if you don't think like this, if you wake up in the morning and it's all about you and what you got to do all day, how busy you're going to be all day, how tired you're going to be when you get home because you're thinking about I'm going to be tired when I get home today because you know I'm tired every day anyway. So I'm not going to even think about helping Pastor love it. I know she needs help. Poor child needs, really, she definitely needs help. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we all know Pastor Love and needs yeah. help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you ever had the thought that others need your help? Yeah. Renewing the mind. Mm -hmm. God said, let, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Mm -hmm. So now you got to think like Jesus. Yes. Yes. So now if you're going to be able to help someone to be that servant who is the greatest in the kingdom, is the servant, mm -hmm. to be like Jesus, you got to start thinking about people. Mm. How can I help so and so? Remember I shared with you previously that the scripture says that God has endowed us with these gifts and talents. 
anointings and understand these gifts and these talents that God has blessed everybody with that are born again. They are not for you. <laughs> See, the gifts, the endowments, and the talents that you received when you got born again from the Holy Spirit, and also those are the, there are some natural gifts that God gives you. Yes. If you notice, they are not for you. So that tells you these gifts are for other people. Yes. Amen. And that's why I say the new king, uh, the new test, the new covenant is always emphasizing others. It's not always emphasizing you. Mm -hmm. Because you're not supposed to just consider you. You're supposed to be like Jesus who did not consider himself. He considered us when he suffered. And God, God highly exalted him, put him at his right hand, place of authority. So what's in it for you? To give yourself? To be exalted by God. Put you in a place of authority. Set you above. 